Okay, let's do it. It is Eric Arnold here back in the sports barn, and it is Saturday morning, early, early. Uh, 1 a.m., 1.30 a.m. Saturday morning, the 2nd of October. Uh, apologize, I wanted to try to get this video uh, done earlier in the week, and uh, that's part of the uh, toughest part about getting old young people. I have my AARP card, uh, and what that basically says is I'm slow. It just takes me so much longer to get stuff done than I used to. I used to be fast, fast, fast. I could pile work up like, get shit done just like that. Can't do it anymore. I can't do it. It just takes me forever to get anything done. Uh, I, I don't have the focus. I don't have the drive. I don't have the stamina. Uh, and then, you know, I end up at places like the Oktoberfest tonight. And that knocks whole, you know, giant chunks out of my day uh so you know but we're back we're sobered up we're ready to make videos and tell you who the winners are gonna be in this uh college football saturday which is rapidly coming upon us so let's get to it uh feel good i think we're you know on the right track i had iowa tonight i thought that was that was a trap but I thought it was a poorly disguised trap, so, you know, I, I evaded the trap and had Iowa. So I feel good. I think we're somewhat dialed in. We had a real good week last week. Uh, we were, what, uh, eight and five with our picks, and then you throw the leaners in there. They were all good, too. So, hell, we were upwards of, like, 15 winners, seven losers last weekend. So um, I feel like we're on the right track. I think our official record... Is it on a slide? I don't know. 27, 21, 27 winners, 21 losers. So, hey, let's get to it. Let's not have a... Oh, I know that subscriber X has such a short attention span. And he was complaining earlier, saying, where's my video? It's like, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> he just... Yeah. My wife wants to go out, so... Uh, we did that, and you don't get a video till now. Now, now you get your video. So, all right. Uh, well, let, let, let's go over the card in general. I did that last week, and I think I worked pretty well. Rather, you know, all my picks, not all my picks, a few of my picks were ones that, you know, are off the map. You know, they're, they're, they're not FCS games, just barely. They're almost FCS games. So let's talk about the big TV games. Uh, that are uh, that we've got here. Oh, uh, I made a note here before we get into this. New subscribers. Uh, we had one here. Higher synth. Higher synth. Thank you for joining. Higher synth. And we hope we give you some winners today. So salute. And uh, so let's see, what do we got? Well, we had I. That's such a big game as they're starting to do what I said. It's like put some of these massive games on Friday, and this was a big game tonight. This Iowa Maryland game, uh, you know, Maryland undefeated, um, and Iowa. Yeah, I think what happened tonight was you just it was a coaching mismatch that uh, Kirk Ferenz just um, baited Maryland into you know, throwing the ball every down, and you can't do that and win in the Big Ten. So uh, six interceptions or some damn thing like that for Maryland. So wipe out in favor of Iowa. Big game next week. Iowa playing Penn State out at Iowa. That should be very exciting. But before we get to that, we're jumping ahead here. So uh, what? I guess here we go. Wisconsin-Michigan, that's early. This is, this is another one of these, like, 11 o'clock starts. I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I guess the Wisconsin has a beat a ranked team in forever. Uh, but I, I just think that Wisconsin pounded these guys last year. And then now suddenly it's all 180. It's all different. The Wisconsin's no good. I mean, it's kind of, I'm not 100% sure what happened in Chicago last weekend. It was close, close, close. And then, yeah, I didn't see a minute of that game. I was, you know, otherwise occupied with uh, 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 at my wife's family's place. So I didn't see one minute of that game. 
but I don't know. It's, Notre Dame exploded there at the end. What happened, Wisconsin? So I'm not sure if Wisconsin's any good, but I'm not sure if Michigan's any good. They struggle with Rutgers. So we're going to lean Wisconsin here. Just kind of Michigan generally doesn't play that well out there. They never have. So I'm kind of, you know, thinking Wisconsin finally gets well. You know, this is one of these trick games where, you know, the unranked team is favored. And you go, hmm. <laughs> You know, there's a ranked team and they're an underdog. Why is that? Let's say Wisconsin there. Massive game here. Is this the biggest game since 1964 for you people from Arkansas? You know, Arkansas versus Georgia. The out-of-nowhere Arkansas Razorbacks. I will say this right now. If Arkansas wins this game, they should be the number one team in the country. No questions asked. They should be the number one team in the country. I don't think they're going to win this game, though, but I think it'll be close. I just The number's too big. I mean, my model likes Georgia, Georgia and I just can't do it. I, I just think the number's way too big. I just think Georgia has a knack, especially at home, of not running the score up on decent competition that, that you know, they've, they've had some pretty big spreads on some decent teams in the last few years. And they, they generally get those games, but they just can't quite blow these teams out. So I'm kind of thinking Arkansas hang around in a, you know, make this close, but not close enough. I think Georgia will win the game. Notre Dame, Cincinnati. This is such an interesting game. This is very rarely do you have games like this where you, you, they're finally going to let one of these uh, whatever uh, uh, poor bastard children that we stick in the orphanage and never let play with the other children, they are finally going to get their chance. They're going to get their chance, allegedly, at the big time. In other words, what they think is going to happen is if they beat Notre Dame, then they're going to get to play with the other children at the end of the year, that they'll get the playoff spot. Uh, you know, a couple things about that. One, I'm not so sure that that's going to happen. And two, it's not going to happen because they're not going to let it happen. They're not going to let it happen. Notre Dame's going to win this game, and even if they don't win this game, they're going to win this game because the powers that be want Notre Dame to win this game. They don't want Cincinnati to be anywhere near that damn playoff. And this could be the last chance to stop these guys. So, uh, you know, ask Jimmy Johnson about that. Strange things tend to happen at South Bend when the game and the money is on the line. Strange things seem to happen, and that's what's going to happen tomorrow or tonight or today. Yeah, the Cincinnati may be in it for a while, but then, you know, a key pass interference call, or maybe Notre Dame's just better. But well, th I'm leaning Notre Dame pretty hard there. Uh, West Virginia, I think they'll cover over Texas Tech. How good is Texas Tech? They just get beat by 35 points by a team that I don't know is all that good either. So I think we're leaning West Virginia there. Uh, big game, Mississippi, Alabama. My God. You know, some would say this might be Alabama's only chance to lose all year. Uh, again, I think the number's too big. I, I, I'm kind of coming down with the theory right now that this is a anybody's year. That there is no super team this year. There is no LSU with Joe Burrow and, and Joe Burrow and, and 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 who is the running back? I forget. Uh, kids at Kansas City now, and his name escapes me. Uh, Hilaire, that's it. Uh, there is no super LSU team. There is no super Alabama team like last year uh, with uh, Mac Jones and company, uh, Devontae Smith. Uh, it, it's anybody's ball game this year, and I don't think there's that big of a gap between the elite teams and the wannabe elite teams. So I think Mississippi could give Alabama a game, particularly, you know, I think we're catching value there because game's at Alabama. 
I, I don't think there's that much of a home field advantage. It, I mean, if you're an Alabama fan, I mean, how rabid are you? You've got to be the most tired of winning, overfed, you know, a lazy fan there possibly could be. You're so used to winning. Are you, do you really take Lane Kiffin? And the old Miss Rebels, seriously? You're taking them seriously? You're lying. No, you're not. You're not taking them seriously. You don't think they can beat you. I don't blame you. Uh, but for, I, I think the Rebels are pretty good. I mean, I think that's a team that uh, is pretty explosive. They score lots of points. I was incredibly impressed when they beat me, and I had Louisville against those team earlier. Their defense shoved Louisville all over the place. I mean, they were just bigger and stronger. So I have a feeling Mississippi could hold Alabama down to, you know, maybe 48 points <laughs> in less than 60. That might just be enough to cover. So I'm leaning hard here, Mississippi. Uh, Kansas State, Oklahoma. Kansas State, they always play well against Oklahoma, especially at home. Kansas State has some crazy home record that you say, well, how do these guys do it? And, the, and I don't know. but And the guy that did it's not there anymore. But this uh, you know new coach they have, he's pretty good too. So I, I, I look out Oklahoma. I still don't think that team's very good. It, it, they, they're just getting by. And I know somebody, I think, was it Mel Kiefer it said they're going to win it all? I think somebody else, big name guy, said the Oklahoma would win it all. I don't see it. Uh, so I'd, I'd K-State there. Uh, Florida, Kentucky. <sighs> this looks like a spot where you'd like to jump the, on the home dog. And Kentucky's the big bruising team. And they're going to, uh, you know, now probably push Florida around on their home floor, come north and shove Florida around. I don't know. I think there's a coaching mismatch here. Dan Mullen from Florida, he's better. He's better than Stoops the lesser. So there's that. Plus Mullen, I think he sees he has a chance at the brass ring. This, is, this could be his deal here. You know, All he's got to do is beat Georgia in the world's largest cocktail party. That's all he's got to do. He beats Georgia, beats all these lesser teams. He's in the SEC title game, and then he just needs to win that, and he's in the playoff. And then, really, he's, you can beat those teams, you can beat anybody. So, you know, I think, and he, him coming that close to Florida, or uh, Alabama, I think he feels, and he might be right, we can beat anybody. So, I think they're going to hammer Kentucky. Uh... Oh, Indiana, Penn State. Oh, my. Um, uh, for those of you outside the Big Ten country, uh, forgot or don't care, uh, last year Penn State opened up the season with basically what should have been. You know, you had two things there. Penn State had a lead at the end of the game against Indiana. Anyone other than a complete fool would have won the game, but James Franklin blew it, basically gave the game, to Indiana through some just stupid coaching, flat stupid coaching. And uh, also then there was a very, very questionable officials call right at the end there that probably was wrong. So all this conspired to put Indiana in the winter circle. So now Penn State has a fantastic team and they are going to get their vengeance. I don't think they are. I think Indiana is going to keep this close, particularly now with Penn State. You know, after that monster performance that Iowa put up tonight, I think Penn State's going to be, you know, looking over the fence there, saying, "Oh shit, we got to go out there and play them." And then we're going to play, and all they're going to wave to the kids, the sick kids in the hospital, and how do we overcome that? And meanwhile, Indiana is they're going to, you know, they want to win a game. They haven't been off to a pretty bad start. So I think they're going to be loaded for bear, Indiana. Oh, Auburn LSU, I don't know. I, I think the barstool guys are getting me brainwashed that LSU sucks. So I'll take Auburn. Um, UCLA, Arizona State, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just leaning Chip Kelly here. I think he's... 
I think he's probably a better coach than Herm Edwards, so I'm going to lean UCLA there on that late night game. But let's get to the ones that actually feel something with, you know, I stand behind. We got a bunch of them here. What do we got? Six. Sixteen. Sixteen games. So let's get to this here. Uh, we got Tennessee early, uh, three points, Missouri. I don't remember. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember. I just think maybe, you know, Tennessee is uh, historically a better team, a bigger team, a more historied football power than Missouri. And I think that stuff does matter. I really do. You know, it, it's, you know, it, 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 yeah, some of it is what have you done for me lately, but then, You've got all those boosters. You've got all that money. You've got all that power behind the program. That translates into recruiting, which translates into talent. So if you've got a big, giant, freaking program, even like Tennessee that's on the skids, they haven't been good, you still got a lot of money behind that program. And money translates into recruiting, which translates into talent. So... I'm going to say there's just a little more talent on the Tennessee team than the Missouri team, uh, and we'll take Tennessee there and the points. We always like points. You know, you, here we here we got a team where we got a bigger institutional historical advantage, and we're getting points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me Tennessee. Uh, Toledo crushing Massachusetts. I don't know why that's there. I honestly don't. I guess we're just trying to think that maybe UMass is awful. And uh, uh, Toledo maybe just jump all over them. I don't know. That that one feels a little sketchy to me, but it's there. We'll say it. No problem. Here we like this game. The uh, Temple at home in Philadelphia against Memphis. Uh, Memphis coming off a bruising, come from a head loss against San Antonio. Now they got to come up to Philadelphia, a place they never play well. Uh, they've yet to cover a number against Temple for God knows what reason. They, 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 they see the owl and they go, ah. Yeah, so we like Temple there. 11 points. You know, Temple's one of these teams that is usually sneaky better than you think they are. Uh, they've, you know, they, they put up a bad number to begin the season getting blown out by Rutgers. So everybody thinks Temple's awful. Mm, like I said, Temple... You know, teams change. Teams, sometimes they get worse. Sometimes they get better throughout the season. So I'm going to say Temple is not quite as bad as they showed against Rutgers. And we'll take the 11. Texas TCU. Apparently TCU has had it over Texas for the most part in the last uh, five, six years. And I think Texas squeaked out a win last year. I think I'm right on that. I don't know. I, I Normally, I lean towards the team that has it over the other team. Uh, but, you know, if 70 points, you know, you can win a couple ways in college football. And one way is to just outscore the hell out of the other team. You know, just, just Chip Kelly them. Just run the fucking score to the moon. And maybe that's the team Temples in, or uh, Texas intends to be. I mean, they gave up 35 points and still, you know, beat them by 35 points. That is so, you know, uh, uh, so you're laying four points. Uh, you could play not badly and only win by nine and still cover. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I kind of, I, I almost think I have to. Texas is one of these weird teams like the Raiders or the Mets where they, they're they unpredictable. You know, you, you get a stellar effort one Saturday and the next Saturday they're just a different team. So we, we're going to go ahead here with Texas and just hope they can string two consecutive good efforts together. Like this game, Eastern Michigan. Uh, and I can't remember why. I think of basically same deal. We played against them last week, and they killed us. They almost had 60 points. Um, I'm going to say that Eastern Michigan's actually pretty good, uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take the point there. Uh, Colorado, USC, uh, same deal here. I, 
I think Colorado has, they played some pretty tough competition. They had a really good game against Texas A&M, and now they've, you know, had some clunkers. And, and I think, uh, you know, maybe they've, uh, but I think now they've had a break from those tough games, you know, Texas A&M, Minnesota smashed them. Uh, so I think they've had a little bit of a break, and they're more ready now to come back and give a, refreshed, we're healthy, we're ready to go effort like they did against Texas A&M um, rather than what they did against Minnesota. So uh, eight and a half points uh, in the, you know, this is a place that uh, teams from Southern California, you know, the mountains, the thin air, it's just different up there. And USC is no special team, if you will. I mean, they got pounded by Oregon State last week. So, you know, what are you going to get with USC? A good, bad? We're never a big fan of teams that fire their coach early in the season or even late in the season, mid-season. That's, that's, always, that's always bad. That's a signal of, you know, we don't know what's going on here as a university. We're screwed up. We're, we're dysfunctional. So uh, we'll go ahead there with Colorado. Central Michigan, Miami, again, I have no idea why that's there. It, 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 I put these together hours and hours and hours and hours ago, and I'm going to guess that it has something to do with yardages. In other words, the model looks at yardages. That's one of the factors that it takes into consideration. Uh, can you stop the run? Can you run the ball? I.e., do you have some ability to control the line of scrimmage? Football is not all that complicated. Usually it boils down to something like that. Can you control the line of scrimmage? And teams that cannot control the line of scrimmage, teams that can't run the ball, teams that can't stop the run, that's where the model's usually looking and saying, you, you, you stink. We, we want to play against you. So I don't know if that's the case here, but uh, we'll take Central Michigan. Uh, Ohio State Rutgers, I... You know, last week, I mean, I guess that just illustrates why Ohio State has such a good against the spread record uh, since, you know, uh, uh, John Cooper left town. Who's John Cooper? No, I could tell you stories, but I won't. Um, since John Cooper left town, Ohio State probably has one of the best against the spread records of any team in the country. I'm going to guess it's top five. Uh, and they just, just outscore teams. They just... Tempo them to death. The, the game is never short enough for the underdog. They just run. It's like, oh, my God, isn't this game over yet? We Akron played pretty well against Ohio State in the first quarter, even had a 7 nothing lead, which usually, if you're laying like 48 points, is a death now. <laughs> and they still couldn't cover because Ohio State just tempoed them to death. And finally, uh, through great effort, ran up 59 points. Probably the worst 59-7 to game I've ever seen in that you didn't look like a team that beat somebody 59-7. to You guys didn't look good at all. At all. That, that, what is his name, Jack McCord? Boy, he didn't look good. I don't think we have a quarterback. I, I, does JT Barrett have another year of eligibility? He's probably 30 now. We could probably bring him back. I don't know. I wonder what uh, Jim Carter, what was that guy's name? I forget. I'm trying to remember the name of the quarterback when I was in school. I can picture the guy. I can't think. He had a Greek name. Karsados? Was that it? Anyway, um, we're going to take Ohio State here. I just think this is more a play against Rutgers necessarily than a play on Ohio State. I think Michigan softened Rutgers up for us, and now, you know, th th there's going to be 20,000 Ohio State fans up there at Piscataway this, this afternoon. It's going to be pretty heavy Ohio State uh, travel crowd up there, and uh, I, I just, I'm not buying Rutgers. They're about due to get crunched once. They, they played really well against Michigan, 
But now I don't think they're deep enough to just do that week after week after week against good competition. So we're going to say Ohio State finally gets well here and takes care of these guys. Oh, let's see. East Carolina, Tulane. I have no idea why that's there. I mean, again, it's probably a yardage deal. Uh, Syracuse getting five and a half from Florida State. I, I'm telling you, we're just going to keep going against Florida State until they win a game, I think. Same deal here. Syracuse is certainly nothing special, but you're catching five and a half. Why is Florida State favored over anybody? <laughs> Are you telling me that Florida State deserves to be a five and a half point favorite? I, I, when a team goes bad, you know, a historically great team goes bad, there's no bottom. You know, they can just be bad. You know, they can go all the way to the bottom and be bad. Now, they might come back faster than, you know, a normal team that hits bottom. But while they're on the way down, there's no there's no stopping it. There's no, the elevator goes all the way to the bottom. Uh, I remember when I was in a school at Ohio State, we had one of the worst years Ohio State ever had. Uh, that was John Cooper's first year after we had flushed Earl got rid of old Earl Bruce, and yeah, that team was a mess initially. We lost to teams we never lost to. We lost at home to Indiana. I don't know if that's happened before or since, but it, it, and we'd sit there and go, how is this happening? And, and frankly, if I'm rem my memory serves me, that Indiana game wasn't close either. It was like 41-7, to seven, I think. I, I think I'm right on that. It was bad. We would lose to teams we would almost always beat. We'd just walk into Columbus and just beat us like like we were some poor baby seal or something. Wham! Oh, we were terrible. So this is what's happening to Florida State. You just got to take your lumps, Florida State. It'll get better at some point, but it won't be now. Right, we're going to go ahead here with Syracuse again. Uh we, we did not cover last week with Oregon, late night. We had such a great start last week, and then late night it all just kind of faded on us. Um, I did. I watched a lot of that Oregon-Arizona uh, uh, game, and I concluded a couple things about Oregon. One, I don't think it's really Chip Kelly's ducks in that they did not seem to – just run it up for the sake of running it up. Uh, they would do their little RPO, but the quarterback would never carry the ball because I think the quarterback was dinged up. He was, you know, hurt. Uh, so, you know, that guy, it was all very, very conservative. Pretty smart, I guess, when you think about it. You know, in other words, if we're going to win this game, there's no point in jeopardizing our players for a game we may need them in. So why am I running this guy to run up the score against poor old Arizona? Now, you know, I think Chip Kelly just would have done it to do it and worried about the injuries later. But, you know, these guys seemed a little more conservative. So maybe something to think about next time there's a huge number on Oregon. Um, that being said, I still think Oregon's a really good team. I mean, they whipped us like we stole something. When they came into Columbus, they drilled us. And they didn't even have some of their best players. So I really think Oregon's got another gear. I think Stanford's going to find that out. I don't think Stanford's that good. So I think uh, Oregon certainly seems to be the play here. Uh, let's see. Akron, I... You know, normally I wouldn't be looking at Akron coming off a game against Ohio State. Um... But then, you know, Ohio State's just not that good this year, I don't think. I don't know. We pounded Akron the way we would normally physically just beat the shit out of a team. And I don't mean on the scoreboard. I mean physically at the line of scrimmage. Guys would be in the hot tub for 72 hours after that. I don't know we did that. Hell, these guys ran up 150, 200 yards rushing on us, I think. On us! On Ohio State, uh, and now you're going to say, well, that's because Ohio State sucks. Yeah, I hear you, and, and I think you're right. But still, I mean, it isn't like they ran it up on Central Michigan. They ran it up on Ohio State. Oh, Akron did some business on the ground. 
And then Ohio, I think, just might be bad. I mean, they got blown out by poor old Northwestern last week, and we had Northwestern. I, I, and when I was doing that pick, the model said, don't worry, take Northwestern. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? Have you seen Northwestern? And the model said, actually, no, I haven't, but don't worry about it. And, and it was right. So I don't know. I think Ohio's just really bad. And uh, we'll go ahead here then with Akron getting, well, you know, that's a decent number of points we're catching, nine and a half. So. Uh, it, you know, Ohio hasn't done much of anything so far this year. So let's see if their Akron's that bad and Ohio's actually deserves to be this kind of a favorite. I say they don't. Hey, let's go ahead here with Army one time. You know, Army's, uh, uh, you know, they're undefeated. They seem to be just covering numbers left and right, rolling right through the Mac. Uh, so we'll go ahead with Army. Uh, North Carolina State, uh, yeah, this is one I don't love. Um, but Louisiana Tech has played close in a number of games and lost, and they've been playing some pretty good competition, and I think this might just be the game they crack on. You know, whereas North Carolina State, you might say, well, they're hung over from the Clemson game, and they'll, they'll just not show up. And that's certainly possible. Oh, the other thing is they might just be really good. They might just be really good. They just beat Clemson. What if they are a top 15 team, North Carolina State? You know, then, then they should cover this number. So we're going to go ahead there at uh, State. Uh, Rice, Southern Miss, again, this is a, a yardage deal. Uh, we don't think Southern Miss is uh, going to be able to stop the run. Rice, uh they played pretty well for a half against Arkansas, who, you know, they're pretty damn good Arkansas. Pretty goddamn good, and Rice played with them. Uh, now, they've been smashed by some, you know, I, they, I think they, Rice got worn down by some really heavyweights. Last week, they had a cupcake um, FCS team. I can't remember the name of it, but I think that resets Rice, gets them refreshed, kind of ready to play like they did in that first half against Arkansas, which should be more than enough to take care of Southern Miss. But lastly, we got Mississippi State, Texas A&M. Uh, I went back and forth on this one. Um, I don't know. I don't think Texas A&M uh, uh, looks like they can uh, stop the run. It looks like pe teams just run on these guys, which just surprises me. Uh, whereas Mississippi State, I was ready to say, oh, but that won't matter because Mississippi State won't run the ball, and that'll be it. They'll, I'm going to say Lynch is a good enough quarterback uh, coach. Uh, Mike Lynch. I got that wrong. Mike Leach. I knew that was wrong. Mike Leach. <laughs> I'm going to say he's a good enough coach that he's going to recognize when he has an advantage. He's like, all right, I hate to do this. I hate to run the ball, but... We can do it here. We, it does give us an advantage. And I think he's going to do it enough that he'll keep it close. And uh, uh, Mississippi State will cover the number against A&M. Which I don't know is, you know, they, 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 they haven't played very well. They, they struggled. They barely beat Colorado. Uh, they got, I think, pretty, pretty securely beaten there by uh, Arkansas. So Mississippi State could very well be undefeated. You know, they just a bounce here, a screwed up deal there, uh, and you know they're they're two and two, but they could be four and zero. Oh. Um, I'm going to take State here. Going to take State. We'll see. We'll see. So that's what we got. I I, I feel okay. I you know I don't know. I feel super about these picks. Uh, I guess we'll just find out. You know they could. Uh, you know, we'll see. But that's all we got. That's all we got. I doubt there'll be a Sunday video. I'd say just, you know, time is just running away. And uh, I'm just, uh, you know, at the moment, I'm not into 70-hour work weeks, just handicapping day, night, day, night, and doing all my other work on top of that. So the NFL probably is going to slip by the wayside here. And your next video, you'll get or be early next week. Uh, I think I'm going to turn around and give you a politics barn uh, uh, episode now, since I'm here. Might as well go ahead and knock that out. 
and uh, I figured those are two separate audiences anyway, so uh, then it won't matter that I double up the video one right on top of the other. Good, great, thanks. Hit the like button if you want to. Uh, subscribe if you really want to. That makes me feel good. And we'll see you again. So let's have a good day of college football. Eric Arnold signing off.